So to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is create the repository. So I will name this recipe tutorial. I'm going to keep it public so that the code can be viewed later. We will initialize it with a readme and we will add a Python git ignore template. Next we need to clone this into our local, so I'm going to copy the HTTPS URL. I will open the terminal and type git clone and paste the URL. Now I will open the new cloned project. So before we get started with the coding, we have some chores to do first. So we need to set up a virtual environment, which will enable us to run the application locally. So we can do this by using the command python -m -v -e -n -v v -e -n -v. So python -m -v -e -n -v is the command you need to set the environment up and dot venv is the name of the folder that I've created for the virtual environment. So I would suggest sticking with either venv, dot venv or env is the um, environment name. The reason for this is the python git ignore will have these in the git ignore by default. So if we go down to here, you can see these would be the standard naming conventions um, for Python environments. So if you did not use the standard git ignore, then you will need to manually add the name of your virtual environment in here. There's no need for us to push the um, virtual environment up into GitHub because this is only to enable us to run it locally. Once we've completed the cloud deployment, whatever host we are using, the virtual environment there will be on its own and it will not be read from GitHub. Once this is created, we then need to activate the environment and we can do that by calling it by name, forward slash scripts with a capital S forward slash activate. So you'll know once it's activated, as you can see here, we have my dot venv. Now it's very important that when you're trying to run the application or pip install any packages, that we are inside our virtual environment. So for one, if we're not inside the virtual environment, we will not be able to run the application. And then the other issue would be if you pip install packages, they will be installed globally onto your machine if you're not in an active environment. So it's very important to double check and make sure that that is activated before um, doing either of those things. Now that we've successfully created and activated our environment, we can go ahead and start installing dependencies into it. So the first thing we're going to need to install is Django so that we can create the project. So we'll do pip install Django. I will be using the newest version So now we are ready to start the project. So from here we can use the Django admin command, start project. We give it a name and then I have a space and a dot. Okay, so the space and the full stop is to ensure that the project files are installed in the current directory. So if you don't use the dot, what will happen is it will create another folder inside the folder. So just to demonstrate, if I do it like this, I have a main folder here and my manage.py is in there. Now why that gives me an issue is because we're going to have to keep CDing in and out of it. So we don't want to do that. So I will move that to the recycling bin. We'll do it with a dot and as you can see now, our manage.py file is at the root directory and our main folder is here. So that will mean that we can stay at the root directory for any of the work that we need to do from here. Okay, so this has created our settings files, our um, base URL files, 
and the manage.py file. So the manage.py file is, is where the instructions go um, in order to execute Django. Okay, so it's very important that you don't delete that folder or move it into another folder. So just to make sure everything's working, we can go ahead and start our app. So we can do that by typing Python manage.py run server. Okay, so when we open up that link, we can see our application is now successfully running on Django version 4.1. The next thing that we need to do is set up our environment variables before we go ahead and commit this code. We never want to expose secret keys, API keys, or things like that into our GitHub repository. Obviously, it's sensitive information. So what we will do is we will store these in an environment file that will not be pushed to GitHub, and then we can load them in. So the first thing I need to do is import OS. We can then say os.environ.get and our variable name, so it will be called secret key. So now in order to use that, we are going to need to import and create a file called env.py. So I will create this file. Inside here, we will also need to import OS so that we can set our variables. So we can say os.environ our variable name, which must be the same as the one that we put into the settings.py. Now, for the secret key, you can use the secret key generator if you want or from online, or for a local one, I, I, I tend to just mash my keyboard a little bit. It doesn't matter too much about the local one as long as you're not exposing your live keys. So the next thing is then, at the minute, we have the OS package imported, but what we don't have access to is that env.py file. So what we can do is we can say, if os.path.exists, our env.py file, then we want to import env, okay? So that will import our env file, okay? So now we will test that back out and we will open our live site again. I will just refresh that and ensure everything's still working and it is. So the next thing I want to do before we go ahead and commit our code is I want to set one more environment variable. So debug needs to be true locally but it should be false in production. So we don't want to have to continuously change this, so we will set a new environment variable called development, okay? So we will check debug equals development in os.environ. So what this line will actually do is it will look in your environment for a variable called development. So if it exists, debug will be true, and if it does not exist, it will be false. Okay, so if there is a time that you need to debug in production, which can sometimes happen um, when things work locally but not in production, then you can go ahead and add that to your production environment and it will show the error messages and then be sure to remove it again afterwards. The reason we don't want debug on in production is because we don't want our error messages and potentially um, different variables and things from the back end being shown to the user. And instead, would we would display proper error message pages so that the user knows that something has gone wrong. So uh, we'll go ahead in the env.py and create this environment variable. Okay, so because this is a string value, um, it doesn't really matter what you put in there because it's it's not a boolean, i.e. true or false, and, and the line that we set is actually just looking for the presence. So I tend to type true anyway because it's just reflective of what I want it to do, but you could put banana waffle in there for all that matters. It would still work. Okay, so now our debug settings should be on for our development environment. So the last thing we need to do now before we go ahead and push our code up to our repo is we need to add 
env.py to the git ignore. So obviously the whole reason for us having the env.py file is so that we can hide sensitive information and that it's not committed for, for the public to see. So once that is added, we see it's now grayed out, which means it will be in the git ignore and will not get added whenever we do get add. So if we go ahead and stop the run server by pressing Control and C, we can go ahead and add all the files. We can then git commit with our message. So I would just call it initial setup and environment bars. And then we can go ahead and push. So that is the end of our initial setup and we will be ready to start coding the rest of the application.